Hey guys, what is up? It is your girl here, Misty Diaz. And we are in the beginning of August already. That just blows my mind. Um, I'm gonna try to just talk to you guys and kinda do my best to get you guys caught up. Um, a lot has happened. If you guys have been following me, um, even if you've been following the last couple of months, you have seen through my social media that it went from a one to a hundred in a span of just days. Um, but uh, first and foremost, I'm just really grateful to be able to speak to you guys. I'm really grateful to be healthy um, and I'm just grateful to be able to tell you guys what's going on. Vulnerability. <laughs> <gasps> that's what's about to happen so I'm gonna be going back and what I believe what will happen here is that there will be probably a part two maybe a part three this is definitely gonna be an intro of what you guys will be seeing through videos that I have posted on other social media platforms um, so I'm just gonna do my best to jump in and just be honest with you guys so in the end of June, around June 24th, June 23rd, um, I got a phone call about 10 p.m. at night. And I'm sure you guys know, if you guys get a phone call, usually at night, it's probably a little scary. Uh, normally people don't call me at night. And when I got the phone call, it was uh, from my brother. And he was like, hey, I'm like, uh-oh, what happened? Like, what, what What? do you have to tell me? And at first I was joking with him. I was like, what, what are you doing calling me at 10, you know, 10 o'clock at night? And he's like, hey, I need to talk to you. And as soon as he said that, I just, like, took, like, a really deep, like, gulp. Like, oh, no. And my immediate follow-up was what happened. And he just began to tell me that our dad had tested positive for COVID. And at first I'm like, okay, what can I do? How can I help? And then I thought, wait a minute, he's got COVID. Like I, I'm completely powerless. I can't do anything. Um, and he said, you know, right now we are taking turns dropping food off at his doorstep. So far, he's at home, he's doing good. And, you know, we talked a little bit. I got off the phone and I immediately got a hold of my dad and said, can I ship you anything? Can I get you anything? And if anybody knows my dad, even if he needs something, he won't ask for it. So I talked to him, I got off the phone. It was around 11-ish. I went on Amazon and I just started ordering things like flu stuff that you might need, you know, like teas and uh, Vicks and like shower eucalyptus stuff. Um, I didn't know what to get them. Like, I don't, I don't, I didn't know what to do. I was completely powerless. Um, so, you know, he got that pretty quickly, the package. And for the past couple of days, once I got that phone call, I want to say for about five days after that, I spoke to my dad for about four days and then the fifth day um, I got another phone call and that was that my dad went into the hospital my dad went into the hospital for having trouble breathing prior to that I was talking to him he didn't say that he was in pain he didn't say that he was struggling if anybody knows my dad, even when he's in pain, even when he doesn't feel good, he will still continue forward. He will still help somebody. He will still act like everything's okay because he doesn't want you to worry. And he's been like that my whole entire life. And it's crazy. Now looking back, I'm like that. If anyone has ever been around me, I'm just like that. Uh, I wait until like the dire, dire minute where I just can't take it anymore and then I'll verbally speak up or remove myself from the situation to take care of myself. Um, 
but my dad was still talking to us and he was still saying hey I'm in a regular room and I mean we were talking to my brothers I was talking to my mom like we were all communicating and my dad was coherent my dad was answering our text messages he was updating us like what you know the staff in the hospital the doctors and the nurses were saying it's not like so when when we when for me personally when I saw that happening of him communicating again I I didn't think oh my gosh like this is I knew it was serious but I didn't think of it in a way where I'm gonna lose my dad I didn't I didn't once think of it like that and I want to say about the fifth day I believe it was on a Monday uh, around nighttime he contacted my brother he did not contact me and I would really like to think that I know my father and the reason why he didn't tell me was because he knew that I would worry And if anybody knows my dad again, he doesn't want you to worry. And I know for a fact that my dad did not want me to worry. So that night he told my brother, I don't know if he told him by phone or by text message, but he told my brother, hey, look, they're going to put me on a ventilator. I'm struggling a little to breathe, but everything's going to be fine. Like everything's going to be okay. Don't worry. That was it. Um, I, the next day, it was literally, I, chaos times 10. I felt this entire time, I feel like I have been just standing in a very crowded, like, like a Costco, like a supermarket, and people are just rushing by me, and I'm just idle, and I can't. I can't get my bearing. I, I can't, I just can't focus. And ever since that day, that's how I've been. Um, so about six, seven days into it, I knew that I probably needed to say something on social media because the way everything was going and you guys were gonna see that I cut back on posting. I. I had to stop working for companies that I was working for on a contract. Um, I've had to postpone it. I've had to exit out of the contracts. Um, things that I can even like go into details on. Um, so I finally, I said something and I limited the comments on my Instagram and I just said, please, Please just keep my dad in your prayers. I just I just couldn't handle the comment. I just couldn't handle anything. I still can't handle anything. I mean, who's kidding? Um, but I finally spoke up because I realized it, this was declining. And for 15 days, I literally slept with my phone right here next to me because I... We were talking to his doctors, we were talking to his nurses, we were communicating, my two brothers and I, like we've never communicated before. Um, we were making decisions, decisions I don't even want to get into because it is so painful um, to even talk about. Decisions that I maybe would have chosen differently but my brothers chose a different way and it doesn't make them a bad person. I'm not saying they're bad. I'm saying that we did our best and that's all that matters. Um, and it's really, really good having somebody older, let me tell you, um, like my brother, <laughs> um, to think a little bit more clearly. It People's true strengths really showed between my brothers and I during this time. And... I mean, as soon as he went on that ventilator, it just went, he would do really good. 
and then he would decline rapidly. He would do really good, his kidneys were producing, and then he would decline and his kidneys weren't producing anything. They, they ended up putting a, a port in one side of his neck um, for dialysis, it wouldn't take. They tried it again, it would take. So we're like, yes, my dad's doing great. Yes, our dad's doing great, this is amazing. And then the port would stop working. And then his kidneys would stop producing and then they would start producing. Then his lungs would drop, the, the, how, much, um, how much the ventilator was set at. First it was like, I feel like it went from like 100% on the ventilator to like 60% to like, I never got the below 60% on that ventilator. Um, the rest was breathing for my dad. So he wasn't breathing on his own very much once he went on the ventilator. Um, we had a million questions. I had, I still have questions. I have like a million questions still that are never going to get answered. And, um, you know, life has not prepared. There's nothing in life that has prepared anybody, definitely not me, for losing somebody, especially somebody that you're close to, especially my father. Losing, being his only daughter and losing my dad has forever changed me. And I'm not saying that's necessarily in a bad way. I don't know yet. I truly don't know. I, it's too soon. Today is week two since my dad has died and I don't, I don't know. I don't know anything. I have no certainty I don't, I don't, I don't have that. I feel, I know I'm kind of going over it all over right now, but I feel like the foundation has just been ripped out from under me because as my dad's only daughter, even when we didn't disagree, even when we disagreed, I still always knew that my dad had my back. Even if we didn't speak all the time, my dad always had my back. Even when I made really bad decisions, and let me tell you, I've made some bad decisions. My dad wouldn't get mad. He would say, why are you doing this? Why? And I, looking back, he wasn't shaming me. He wasn't angry. He was trying to understand why I did what I did. And that, to me, is something... I wish that, I mean, I personally need to work on as well, but I wish as human beings, that's how we would be instead of so judgmental. We would try to understand why that person made that decision, why that person said this, even if we don't agree. We all come from so much damage, you know, whether it's self-inflicted or the world or our upbringing or ourselves. And I don't know, my dad just never, he never like yelled at me. He never, never raised his voice. He never got mad at me for making bad decisions. And here I am in a, in a situation where I'm completely helpless. And in my entire life, even up until, you know, recently, the past couple years, my dad has always been able to help me. Whether it be a little gas money for my car or, you know, lunch money or, you know, making sure my insurance is paid for. That's a whole nother thing. So, by day, I want to say like 14, his doctor's um, his nurses, I'm sorry, were really, really, uh, they weren't laying it on thick, but they were trying to communicate that we needed to make the decision because they had exhausted all resources. And I don't know, my brother, my, my brother was, um, the one to make that decision. 
And I know that if I was in that position, which again, we all kind of agreed as a whole, all three of us, making that decision and coming to acceptance with that and knowing that you have exhausted all of your resources with your father and trying to just give him a little bit of just just keep him alive so my um my brother kind of waited a couple of days and I understand 100% I understand it is by far one of the hardest decisions that no one has ever prepared you for is to tell the doctors to tell the nurses to decrease the ventilator so I said goodbye to my dad via FaceTime <laughs> I think that is the most inhumane way to say goodbye to somebody that you love you know going back to that 14th day or 13th day like day seven I was like we need to schedule a time to talk to dad as a whole and take turns and I told him if he woke up <laughs> that I would um, keep that tradition that him and I always had when I was a little girl even if it meant me driving a couple of hours to go and get him and then we talked to him a couple of days later, more towards the end. I said goodbye, and it was so crazy. I said goodbye to him. By then, I had already gone up north. I was already there for like over a week. And that late e that evening around 2 or 3, his kidney started doing well. And I'm like, here goes my dad playing jokes, you know, like, just kidding, I'm going to make it. And then by the next, by that night, his kidney started declining. And in my head, I'm thinking, wow, that, it's crazy how the human body is. You know, you always hear about how people do really good and start remembering things and their their functions start coming back for a very very limited time and then they decline and that's exactly what happened that is exactly what happened and that last day I said goodbye to my dad about 10 p.m. I went to bed and the next morning I got up to do an interview with ABC Nightline. I'll get more into that in a second video. And I didn't, for like the past 15 days with my brother and I, what we would do is text each other in the morning and say, hey, what time are we gonna check on dad this morning? And we would do usually two check times that we would check in together and nobody said anything to me I knew but I had like this much hope so I called the hospital to check on my dad one last time and the girl and his nurse got really quiet with me. I can't imagine. I don't. I don't know how these. I don't know how these nurses and doctors do it. It's mostly the nurses. Um, let's be real. <laughs> these nurses just really they pick up so much of the weight of these doctors. Um, I've seen it firsthand from being you know in the hospital so much. 
she got really quiet and she asked me if I spoke to my brother. And I said, no, nobody's messaging me. I go, can you tell me one thing? <laughs> Please don't lie to me. And she said, absolutely. I said, was my dad in any pain? And without a pause, without anything, she goes, no, he wasn't. He passed away this morning. And we made sure that he was so comfortable. My dad was supposed to retire the week after from a company, from an industry that he served for over 35 years. He worked for Kroger for about 30 plus years and then went to another company, but in the same field. And he would have been 63 now, but he died a week prior to his, a week and a half prior to his birthday. He was supposed to retire. I think that's what really, really gets me is my father worked his entire life. My father was so poor growing up that he went to work at like 12 years old in the fields. And he couldn't retire. <sighs> ABC News had gotten a hold of me when they saw my Instagram of my father getting sick from COVID-19. And then I, I started documenting on TikTok. I didn't post right away. I uh, waited several days to post after. And one of the v videos went viral, like almost two million. And I say that not because numbers mean anything. They don't. But because it's brought so much awareness news outlets contacted me but you know what was even most what was even more amazing was the fact that there are so many people on that post who are saying that I've lost a parent and I have a disability or I just recently lost a parent to COVID I didn't know that I was the only one going through this thank you or I wasn't taking this seriously thank you for, for being vulnerable and showing how you've had to walk through this and the pain and the frustration. Um, I have had people say, the people have just shown compassion and we don't see that often. I hate to say that and I wish we saw it more. So about 15 to 20 minutes after I hung up the phone with my dad's nurse who was by his side while he passed away I finished getting ready put on a little makeup walked out the door and I gave an interview for world news to help bring awareness and you know what it really helped me. You might think, why would you give an interview not even an hour after your dad died? But if any of you have been following me for as long as I've been posting on social media, you would know by now that me speaking and using my voice is a healing and coping mechanism to help me get through this life, this really, really hard life. And it helps me bring awareness to issues that are pressing, that are hard, that are uncomfortable for people to talk about, for people who 
just couldn't fathom speaking about such. It allows me some peace in my gut. It's been 38 days. It's been 38 days. It's been over 38 days, actually. My dad's funeral was on August 1st, which is 20 days before my birthday. My dad had a very, very beautiful funeral and we couldn't have done it without the family and everybody who chipped in. Um, seeing my father in that state with an open casket. was by far one of the most uncomfortable things. My dad didn't deserve this. Nobody does. Nobody deserves to die. Nobody deserves to lose a parent, a loved one, even a pet, anything. And I'm learning a lot from this and I, I, I can't answer that all right now, and maybe that will be a video later on. Because I'm still in this. My dad was supposed to be cremated this week. I got some, uh, some jewelry to put his ashes in. I don't know if he has been cremated yet due to the backlog of how many patients there are who have passed away from COVID-19 in Kern County. There is a wait list, days, just by days, but still that's a wait list of how many people have gotten sick from COVID in Kern County. So he's, he's, he's a number. They have a lot of questions. I have a lot of frustration. I don't necessarily have anger. I have frustration. I have a lot of anxiety. That's a whole other video as well. Like I just got content all around here. Um, what I've been doing for my anxiety. I've been, I've had to take stuff. Maybe this year is just about survival and really learning how to adjust and really learning how to be comfortable in a very uncomfortable world that we live in. So I'm going to be posting videos going back towards the day when, you know, I found out my dad got sick couple of days when we were into him being sick and it's just it's gonna go back and it's gonna walk you through it so that's gonna be a part two and um, I don't know what to say I really don't I just I wanted just to talk to you guys just me no filters no nothing I just wanted to speak to you guys from the heart I don't, I don't think I'll ever recover from this. I think I will learn to eventually to accept the uncomfortability and maneuver around it and walk through it. I think some days will be harder than the other. I just, I never thought this would happen. My dad was only 62. My dad was an essential worker. Like, I don't, I don't know. Thank you guys if you made it this far. Love you guys.